Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. Today we're gonna be looking at this cell shader I made in Cinema 4D and a little bit of After Effects compositing afterwards. This comes from a music video me and Eric did recently for Cesar Ivan Tiempo and it's a really cool song, it's a really cool music video. We spent a shitload of time trying to figure this out inside of Corona Renderer and I'm actually very happy with how it turned out. So first of all, I would like to let you know, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You know, we're growing at a steady rate. We're gonna be releasing a lot of new tutorials, including some interviews with a few people we know. And uh, yeah, basically the film process broken down. So let's get into Cinema 4D. Here inside of Cinema 4D, you can see what kind of you would get straight out of there. The way I did it is by using luminance materials for everything. And if every luminance material is set to the same intensity, no colors will bleed into each other and you basically get a cell shader look. Now, I know there is a tune shader inside of Cinema 4D and cell shading seems to have quite a few different methods that people do it. Basically for the 3D models we were using and for my preferred workaround with Corona Renderer because then you can basically just play around with your camera settings. If you're working with light objects only, I feel like you get a bit more control on how the colors change in relation one to each other. We have luminance materials applied with polygon tags. Here you can kind of see what the setup is we've got going. We're using all of these buildings from our construct pack. It's just some basic buildings with billboards and some basic details for constructing a city. And then we have two planes down here. Now, if I select those, you'll see the highlight down here of the material. So this is a piece of mountain that I painted in Photoshop, just manual painting. I'm really bad at painting things in Photoshop, but this was simple enough I guess and then we have a another card behind it and that one has a gradient applied and we did work with a graphic designer to figure out how to properly translate photographic reference of gradients of the time of day we wanted into a nice satisfying gradient with just like a few colors as you can see it's just four colors transitioning and the intensity is set to one and the intensity for all these other ones are set to one as well. It's just a material with a self illumination applied to it and a multiplier of one. And for the buildings, actually, there's an interesting thing. It actually renders pretty quickly because it's just a few light materials. If you look at the window, there is a gradient applied to the entire surface with the gradient set to step interpolation. And as you can see here, it just gives you one color and then a sharp line and the next color. The gradient itself has been rotated down here by angle and set to 45 degrees. That way it feels as if it's the light from some random source that is creating this glass effect. Where the reflection comes from doesn't matter too much in this instance as we're just creating a popping lit up window frame for these buildings. Now let's fly to this billboard over here. As you can see, again, I just looked for a few reference images of um, discounted plane tickets to some kind of fun resort. And I just took some of these images and did a rough paint over in Photoshop. As you can see, it's really just, these people are just a few smudges. The plane itself is nothing that looks really well. And these things were really done in a time crunch, I would say. Me and Eric first took a very long time to figure out exactly what the shots were gonna be. And we were just working in hardware renders at that point. The texturing of this all was kind of done in a few days. The billboard with the lack of detail actually seems to translate a bit better and seems to blend more nicely in with the rest of the environment. If I were to fly to the car, you'll see that we basically have a polygon selection of different areas 
Um, this car was a 3D model that we purchased online on TurboSquid. We then did some retopology on the thing, making it made up of quads. And that way it was very easy to select all the areas that we wanted and then apply the different tags to it. Now, the idea of doing it this way kind of came from looking at the behind the scenes for the video game Borderlands. And if we had more time, we could basically expand on this idea by taking these 3D models into Substance Painter and then just painting with 2D colors and making a UV wrap that's a luminance material. And that way you could probably apply this technique for quite a variety of aesthetics that you would want in a 2D cell shaded short film, music video, or whatever you're doing. The glass is kind of the only thing that we cheat on a bit. Basically the window material is an emission material with a gray color. And then we have an opacity with a Fresnel effect. But the Fresnel effect is really sharp. You basically drag this circle over here all the way until it almost touches the black area. And as you can see, the Fresnel is based on where the camera is looking and the direction of these objects facing the camera. It means that it creates some kind of glass effect where a light streak passes the window depending on what angle you're looking at it and in the other times it's just completely transparent which i guess it's fine i guess it's just the aesthetic of this car okay now there is one thing i would like to explain you about color theory and we're gonna jump into photoshop real quick all right there are probably different methods for this but let's say you have a daytime sky And then you have a, let's say this is a dark brown floor and it's facing a very bright white sky. So the idea is that this color over here and this color over here will be affecting one another. Now it's more probably that the bright blue color will be affecting the bottom color rather than other way around. And if we just lower the opacity here, all right, you can see what the intermediary color would be. And if you look at the hue over here, you can see that it ranges, that the color hue ranges from there to there. Now, both of these things are going to have to be influenced by another. That means that the brown hue is going to go up towards the blue because the blue is affecting it more. So it's pulling it more towards that side. And the brightness is also going to go up towards there. If I quickly get that brown again, so 3, 4, 2, 0, 1, 5. Now let's turn on this thing. I'm going to bring it down there and I'm going to push it towards this. Let's try it out. All right, so we call that setup day. Let's give it one more try with golden hour. So we're going to be somewhere here. Let's pull up the other color of the wood again, and then we pull up this color, bring down the opacity, measure where it's going. So you can already see down here that the color of the mahogany wood is not going to leave too much from where it is hue wise. And the lightness is one of the main things that's probably going to be affected. going to go somewhere here. All right, then this is evening. So essentially the color in the middle is supposedly the same color, but it's being affected by the light of the environment. And we are suggesting that by just kind of averaging the colors out and then 
that's the consistency that we keep throughout the video. So, for example, the body parts of this car in this shot have this hue of red, but if we go to a different shot, then there we have averaged out some of the values in the scene to more accurately match, at least within this universe, what this car looks like. And that's basically, if you follow those techniques, you should be able to get a pretty decent looking cell shader effect inside of Cinema 4D and with Corona Renderer, I guess, in this example. If we go into After Effects over here, I can show you a few more things that we did afterwards because, you know, compositing, that's where you can really bring the most out of your footage. In the back, we have a black solid and on top of it, we have a gradient ramp effect that is using the gradient that we had previously been using inside of Cinema 4D. The reason why we're doing this is so we have the After Effects high-res gradient in the background. Then we have a few different plates. We have the background plate with the cutout of the windows. Then we have the light plate that goes right on top that is separately animated. Then we have the car with the railing. On top of that, we have this effect, which I'm going to actually solo out. You probably know how to do this. We basically just made the car 100% chrome inside of Cinema 4D and then we wiped a area light crossing every part where the car is crossing a street light. And then we exported that black and white image and just used a tint effect to change the color to whatever highlight color we wanted. The next layer are the lights from the traffic lights. I hadn't exported them the first time, but because all of this is just a 2D cell shader composite, if you forgot to render something, just render it out again and slap it on top of there. Then we have a adjustment layer set to add with a Gaussian blur of 34 and an exposure crunched down. So if you imagine what this is doing, it is essentially crunching all the values except for all the bright values, and then it's blurring everything out. That set to add just gives a glow effect that's only present around all of the lights and all of the bright areas of your shot. Then there is another adjustment layer that's repeating that process, but it's blooming it out all the way to 197 blurriness and that's really giving that glimmer glass effect. Now, the reason why we wanted this is because it's a music video for a pop track, but except for that is we knew that we were gonna composite quite a lot of grain on there because we were trying to make some kind of grungy, cel-shaded look that's coming straight from a film stock. So we knew that having a bit of that blown out look onto it would really interact nicely with the grain. Then we have one more adjustment layer that is changing some of the colors. We are giving it a bit more contrast, a little bit of exposure with a little bit of gamma correction. Then the vibrance went up by two. I don't know why, but well, you know, sometimes that little two is fine. It's all what you need. Then a tritone effect. There is a tutorial in which I cover this on the Blau Films channel. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of green and a little bit of purple in the shadows. Together, that gives a little bit more of a cinematic look to the image. You know, there's no shadow underneath this thing, by the way. So, if you want a shadow, you can just export a shadow pass. Uh, we didn't actually use a shadow for the car, making really the car pop out. It looks a bit strange in some of the shots, but it's also, it gives that really cartoony look. Then, on top of everything, I have these fireflies. Now, these are basically coming from a Canon 60D 6400 ISO footage of just blackness. And then if you crunch that down even further, you start seeing all of these fireflies from the digital sensor. It looks really strange and we've used it before on the King Common Power Tools music video. Um, but I feel like it gives a bit of a interesting look to the cel-shaded footage. 
we have pre-composed all of that together and then here we have a adjustment layer with a camera lens blur and a bit of a vignette going on mask set to subtract with a feather of 250 we have a null object that has a wiggle expression under the position 11 comma 0.5 just making a very very small film jitter on top of this there is pre-comp 1 inside of pre-comp 1 is a fuji film stock that is actually available for free that we kind of we kind of photographed these while we were doing this music video and they just happen to be handy and they're available for free on the artstation store so links in the description we have that on top followed by cine action film grain the clean plate actually looks really nice i don't mind the clean plate at all but then the film grain really sells the total idea and also gives it that vintagey effect that really works in my opinion with the nostalgia vibe that the track is creating yeah i'm actually very happy with how everything turned out so be sure to check out the video uh, i'll leave the link in the description below it's a cool music video i'll soon be making a new tutorial with eric in which we kind of discuss how we set the cinematography up for this shot and how it was like kind of working on a 2d music video because a lot of the the 2D-ness comes from how we frame the shot and how the compression is set up. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to check that out. Hope you have a good day and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.